everybody welcome to bass angler magazine i'm big ed and i'm going to be out here interviewing vince hurtado today and vince is going to be uh talking to us a little bit about the apex uh vince has a very very good uh i guess his finger on the pulse of the apex so being able to uh give us some great insight some good information on what the apex is and some of the things that have gone down recently we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about quite a few things Vince is a, a guy who has, um, you know, fished a lot of different tournaments. He's seen a, a lot across this country. He's a heck of an angler, and uh, he's a great person to talk to. So, Vince, thanks for coming on. Uh, you know, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come on here and talk to us about this. And, you know, hopefully we can uh, clear the air and, and also bring up some great information. I'm going to be, at, you know, hopefully have some questions for you that, you know, we'll clear it up for everybody. Hey, thanks for having me, Ed. Uh, I, to be honest with you, uh, it, it's just, it's refreshing, you know. To to we're seeing more and more interviews with anglers about Apex. That the talk is out there. Um, I've been reached out to by other individuals and other uh, uh, interviewers and, and media people outside of basically the West, and and the buzz is there. So it's it's nice that we get to start here on the West Coast with you. And I'm sure that it's going to go uh, as far as we want it to go. So thanks for having me. Oh, no, really appreciate it. Um, you know, I, I, I want to start off right off the bat. We, we, um, we had a, 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 the first event, the first true event, not, not, the, not the one up at the, um, up at the river, but the actual event that started it all here, which is Lake Almanor, and that came and it was when and it was God, it was such a great event, turned out everything. And then we had a little bit of a cloud that came in afterwards. And I kind of want to touch a little bit about that. Um, Austin Wilson actually came on this show, talked a little bit about what he was doing. And some of the stuff that he said, raised a bunch of eyebrows and raised a bunch of uh, information and there had to be some action taken. Um, I don't know how much you can divulge at this time on what happened. Uh, I think everything's kind of come down now, but uh, you know, wherever you feel comfortable, people out here would like to know what's going on with uh, what happened there. You know, I, I think that's just, first off, let me just say that I am in no way, shape or form affiliated with, you know, while, or I should say apex wild west jeremy dehart or any of the decision making that he has or processes that they have in place i'm simply an angler and yes when you have these types of things happen you know uh, there's always a little bit of dialogue amongst other anglers and uh, i would lie if i said that i didn't raise an eyebrow for a moment or two or three but the reality is this as an angler um and as a supporter of apex and my fellow competitors um, I have to trust that the processes in place will work its way through the situation, if that makes sense. And let me back up by saying, you know, J Jeremy immediately uh, got word and uh, he, he, he let us know, he communicated via email that something was going on and, and that the process was in place and that it was going to be handled. And for me, that's good enough. I can't, I'm not, I'm not judge or jury. I'm an angler and I would never do that. And if, you know, if Austin's looking at this, you know, Hey buddy, I'm, I'm all, you know, I, I don't pass judgment. I, you're, you're good with me. You know, whatever happens is, is, is what happens within that organization. However, I will say this, the processes in place are there because it's, it's, it's a, uh, like kind of like a, a, a fair and equal way to kind of get things taken care of as anglers for me. And I'm only speaking for myself. I trust it. What, whatever the verdict is good, bad, and different to my thinking, it's smashed. It's done because I'm here to fish. I'm here to promote. I'm here to be out there for our, uh, our supporting partners. And that's what we're going to do. So I'm just moving on, you know, um, when whatever happens happens, but you know, um, like I said, well, I'm just going to support it because the processes are there, you know? Okay. So there hasn't been anything that you know of yet that's come down that we, you know, 
share no. with people any 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 major i mean I, I haven't heard you know he hasn't been disqualified he hasn't been fine yet no 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 and and honestly okay. it wouldn't even be my place to say even if he right. was i it wouldn't be my my place to say that but uh i'll all i will say is you know i'm sure whatever's in place is in place and it, it'll be fine you know we're all we're all gonna survive things happen right. um and you know what uh, we all support apex we all support jeremy to heart the tournament directors they're there for a reason and right. you know what we we are backing them 100 percent and and, well, and i know i know i am you know so well it's, it's a uh, professional I, sport and you know professional sports have have rules and regulations so yeah i mean we have our own responsibilities and, and we just right. try to walk the line and, and follow them as best as we can yeah um you know, as far as that, you know, that kind of goes in there, there are some things that a lot of people have asked me about. And a lot of the questions I'm going to be asking today are questions from other people who this is things that they want to know about the apex that maybe aren't clear out there. Um, and probably the, 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 one of the, the, the big questions I get leading off of that is what are some of the requirements, you know, for eligibility when you become, you know, if you do make it to the apex, what are your requirements? What do you guys have to do to stay there, be there, you know, uniforms, wraps, things like that. What are the requirements that, that are out there? Well, I think <clears throat> um, let's let's back up a second if we could. Apex sure. is a whole nother standard of tournaments. And 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 Jeremy has positioned it as such so that not only do the fans understand that it's a different level, but the partners and the viewers and those that are uh, looking in, uh, understand that this isn't just a derby, right, so to speak. Right. So with that, the, some of the requirements are, you know, full jersey at all times. Um, rap boats are a must, and and the reason why is because, you know, what it gives the it gives our partners and future partners an opportunity to see that there is advertising space or promotional space that they can acquire from an angler, especially when they get to know them. And Apex is the foundation that's gonna allow the anglers to actually showcase who they are. And for, for people like yourself or you know uh, any company that, that might be tuning in, go, wow, that, that person right there is like, he, he, I can identify with that person and he speaks our language. And you know what? He might be a great representation of our company. We, sh you know what? you know what, let's, I wonder if I can get on his jersey. Can I get on his boat? I want to talk to these people. And um, that those two requirements are, are there. Um, obviously, there's some, some deeper requirements when it comes right. to um, um, what our um, responsibilities are, whether it's entry fees or, or uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, we call the, we call them just obligations sponsor obligations right. or partner obligations, meet and greet, we have to be there, Right. you know? Right. So, so that's that. I mean, when it comes to qualifying, that's a whole nother game, you know? Well, we that, can, we and can, that's, yeah, I was going to say, and that's kind of something else I would lead into right after that was, you know, what, what's the qualifications, you know, how are you going to qualify for this in the future? Um, I know that this year, and we'll, and we'll get into this a little bit further down the line, but you know, um, these are the obligations you have, but, how do I get there? How do I become a, uh, you know, an apex angler at this point uh, going forward? Okay. Well, first there's only one way to get into apex and that is through the feeder program, which is wild west bass trail pro there, okay. there's there, there, that, there's no other Avenue. That is the Avenue. So you, well, you take that Avenue and that that's the first step. You start driving that, that Avenue. Next thing is they will be taking. Um, I want to say, don't quote me about 10, off the angler of the year list from top to bottom. Now there may be some double qualifiers. Um, I mean, this last team, I mean, this last event, you could see that, you know, a number of apex anglers were at the top, right? So um, if there's double qualifiers, they'll probably go down the list. I say probably because apex has the right to go further down if need be, you know, mm -hmm. And, right. and we, you, you always have to do that because things ha life happens, you know, I, right. I mean, I'm, in, I'm here with a bum knee right now. I have surgery on May 13th. Who knows what happens if they chop my leg off and, or I got something serious and I can't go in. Well, maybe now they're going to take 11. Who knows? So, so he, so apex has the right to go down the list. 
So yeah. that's how you qualify the feeder program through Wild West Bass Trail. Finish high on the angler of the year list. You know, for sure, the top 10 will have an invite and anything lower. If there's double qualifications, they're probably going to go down a little bit. And you're talking about the pro-am specifically, right? Not, not anything else. The pro-am specifically. Okay. You know, and, and as of right now, I believe you have to fish three out of the four to qualify, you know? Okay. Right. And I, and I've had questions before, you know, some people ask, well, how come this person didn't get invited this last time? Well, you know, that person didn't fish all the events. Right. Yeah. But they might've, you know, they did really well. Look, I don't make the rules. I just, right. I just know them. <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, that's, that's definitely part of that is, um, you know, there's all, and there's going to be, just like you said, there's going to be people that even though they maybe made the list, they look at it and say, Hey, you know what, what's your entry fees? $2,000. I think it is to get into it at each event or 3000, something like that. It's something like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, it, I mean, it, you're talking about somebody may just sit there and go, Hey, you know what? I can afford to do the proms. I cannot afford to step up into the apex. So if they didn't, if they didn't walk down from that and say, Hey, well, the next guy in line, get your spot, you know, you'd have a bunch of holes where you didn't have people on the, on there. So Right. You know, that's and, and that's you know an important to look right. at. And, and something to think about, I want to touch base on is I want to, you alluded on something, you said something about the, the entry fee. And, and the reality is, is a lot of us, almost a hundred percent of us, we're not even looking at the entry fee because right. it's not, it's not about the money at this point. It really isn't because it's actually driving some financial or economic uh, mm -hmm. means to us. This foundation has like really created opportunities for a lot of the anglers. I mean, a lot. So right. all of a sudden it's not about the entry fees, you know? Yeah. And but, it's, it hasn't but part been of the, yeah. But part of that, and you know, is you can say that, but a guy who let's say, let's say next year, I, you know, I fish the pro-ams, I do really well. I have an epic year and I get up there and I'm like, Hey, I can qualify for apex. That's awesome. I've made it. They send me the invite and I sit there and I look at it and I go, great. I got to put my kids through college. I can't afford that entry fee. Now I don't have, I, you know, I'm one of the, I don't have a sponsor that's willing to step up and pay that entry fee that does come into play. And the entry fees may not mean a lot to guys who are established in there, but if you're a guy who had a good year and all of a sudden you qualify for it and you really want to fish it, entry fees are going to make a difference, you know, and yeah. in the future, I understand that they want to make this a no entry fee thing, but right now you can say it's not, but it is, you know, it is, yeah. it's going to take some for some people. And I'm not saying you're one of those, obviously you've got some good avenues working, but it is going to be a, a, yeah. something for you, somebody. You are definitely, you're 100% correct. And, and let me step back because I I've been that guy. I, mm -hmm. I, I remember in 2006, getting the invite to the elite series, the Bassmaster elite series. And it was $66,000. Yeah. It was $6,000 basically an event. And I went, Oh my gosh. Okay. What am I going to do? You know? And, and if I didn't have those finances available or I didn't have things in order, you know, it would have detoured me in, in some way, shape or form. And it, and it, right. and it has, and, and we've seen that in the past and other things. So I do agree. I, I don't believe that it's unattainable. It's not like that huge, huge, fee no um, it's it's not sixty six thousand dollars and don't yeah. and don't get me wrong like i said i think i don't know what you guys paid in entry fees this year i think it was somewhere in that two to three thousand dollar range and honestly that's probably doable for most people if they if it's your passion it's your heart you're going to come up with a way to come up with that kind of money because it's three events four events right now and you can come up with that and hopefully like what you're saying is that it's going to lead to sponsors that come up and say hey we're more than willing to pay for that you know for you to be out there and representing us uh, yeah, you know, that's it, it's definitely open up uh, opening up a, a lot of doors for anglers um, right. and, and and for the sport, which is great because it's it's a trickle down effect because it's not just about apex when you think about it. Ed, it's about the industry. And, and you know this really well. Oh, no, when definitely. someone sets a trend, everyone benefits from it. Everyone Correct. benefits from it. And, and that's why Jeremy has become such a catalyst. Um, in, in this in this uh, market, uh, and I say media market because that's what Wild West is. It's a, basically a media company that puts on these events. Sure. And then, you know, he's really aligned himself with great partners, you right. know, with, with you know, the addition of Bass Cat a, a year or two ago. Rick Pierce has been instrumental. Mercury has stepped up. You've got Bridgeford. My gosh. Bridgeford is a prime example of, of 
bringing something to the table. Non-endemics like Bridgeford, you know, are, are opening eyes to other people. And oh, that's the heart. That's the heart and soul. And I've said that for a long time. If you can get non-endemics to come on board, you're always going to better your sport, no matter what it is. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you say this is a media, you, this is a media driven industry right now. Any professional sport is media driven. You don't go right. out on that base. You don't go out on that baseball field right now. You don't, you're not paying those guys, you know, 10 to 12, $13 million a season for them to not generate media revenue. Right. <laughs> that's where they're making their money. Coca-Cola is paying for that dollar bill out there. You that's know, for that's that right. And Jer Jeremy, he's been, uh, uh, every angler that's part of Apex has been blessed with that foundation because what Jeremy has provided us is that open canvas to say, okay, I'm going to create a menu for myself. Right. Uh, it, and my menu might be smaller if I'm someone new in the industry and it might be much larger if I'm, you know, I mean, someone like Jared Littner, right? He's been in the right. industry. He's fished like all these different levels. So his menu is going to be a lot bigger, but we have that. But now anglers have the menu and it's right. nice to be able to say, I can actually develop myself now and create a value. And then what happens is Apex and Jeremy have developed media outlets yourself, right? I mean, you're right. talking to anglers. We have David Brown, who's writing for Wild West and Apex. Renowned writer, he writes for BASS and FLW. Um, he, he, Jeremy's, it's all televised events. So it's going to be coming out shortly. The YouTube channel is blowing up. So he's creating all these, you know, uh, roads to advertising and promotion. And, and they're all available for us anglers. And to be honest with you, outside of, you know, some of the larger, you know, MLFs or BASS, there's nothing like that or remotely close in the West coast, nothing. Oh, nothing at all. No, this is definitely a, uh, I've said this before and I've said it now, this is definitely something that we have desired out here in the West coast for a very long time. And as long as we can support it, find the support for it, keep the support for it, it will grow and it will be our, our professional angler, uh, our, our professional sport out here in the West coast. Uh, for us anglers um it's exciting you know, it's oh exciting. it's <laughs> for me it's super exciting I, I think it's great i mean it's um i think this is an amazing i think what jeremy's doing is is, is just absolutely awesome and i'd love to see it and i, and I want to see this thing grow it's why i'm doing what i'm doing um you know but one of the things that you kind of touched on in there and one of the big questions another huge question i'm getting is you're seeing these anglers out there and, you know, you, you mentioned the Jared Littners and you see the Austin Wilsons, but you also see some anglers out there. And I won't name anybody because I don't want to put anybody on the spot like that. Um, but there are a lot of, ang there are anglers out there. And I won't say a lot. There are anglers out there fishing this tool right now. The people are going, why is that guy there? And how, how does that make this a pro event if this guy's fishing and maybe somebody else that they feel isn't fishing it? How is you said there's one way to it, but there's obviously other ways to it. Maybe it was just this year. Maybe it was just the first two years. There's obviously another way in. Um, why are some of these guys out there fishing that maybe, I guess it's a perception thing of why they didn't, how did they get there? How do people get there okay. to this, to the apex levels? So it was actually put out when it first, um, when it first at the, at the inception, um, I think on a live event when Jeremy was talking and, and, the first year was critical, just like anything else. When you look at MLF, okay, when it first started, um, very, very critical. Um, the they went down. Ang Jeremy went down Angler of the Year list, okay, and then he took um, some sponsor exemptions, and then he took some uh, former Cup winners as well and Cup participants that helped grow this to this level. Okay, there was a lot of people that invested time and free time basically to go in there and play for their own money at that time. Well, that, that was the inception and you always have to have a base right now. There were, other, I know that for a fact, there were other people uh, invited. Uh, I can name Ricky Shabazz. Um, who's a great angler, incredible spokesman. I mean, he's very, very well. Art he's art very articulate uh, and, he flat out said, thank you, but I don't have the time. 
he wanted to. He, he said, I'd love to, but I don't have the time. And, and man, I got the utmost respect for that man. And there are other anglers too, but I don't have all the details. I just know right. like for Ricky, I do have those details because I remember that discussion. Um, the other anglers, they, they, those people that are wondering why, they need to ask them, you know, well, how come you're not there? I don't know. Um, I, I, I think some, one of the anglers was injured um, and was recovering or one of them declined said, I, you know what, I'll be there next year just because I'm still healed. I don't know. I don't, I don't know at all. There's always these rumors. I try not to speak about them, uh, but right. I can only speak directly about Ricky Shabazz, you know, and I, I have had that question too. Why sponsor exemptions? It's really critical. Yeah. I was gonna say that, that is my next question is what, where, you know, cause that's a lot of people go, well, the sponsor exemption is just putting somebody in there that they don't do lo- They don't belong there, but you know, they're in there because they got, they bought their way in through a sponsor. No, is that, how, I, is that actually how it happens or how, what, how are the sponsor I, exemptions work? Again, I can't speak on how it happens. I can mm-hmm. speak on what my, th- my thoughts are on it. Um, I can tell you that, you know, um, I know that FLW has done it in the past to allow anglers to fish, you know, FLW at the time. Right. Um, and, you know, Apex reserves the right to do that also. But I think you have to have it from, and this is just my point of view. When someone brings something to the table that is going to benefit the tour, the mm-hmm. industry, and the anglers, I don't know about you, but that, that pretty much earns, earns and gives that, that company the right to say, we would like our representative to have an opportunity to play as well. Now, they still have to re-qualify, but right. we, would, we would like that. And I think any, any businessman would, would have to, or woman, would have to at least lend that, uh, or not lend the obligation, but at least consider it. And right. clearly, it's something that I think at least in the inaugural year or the first year or first couple of years, it's important we do that, you right. know? Uh, and, and, I, and that's just my opinion. I, again, no, I don't I, know I, what other ones I, other I, are thinking. Yeah, I, under, I mean, I understand how the exemptions work. I mean, if someone, you know, let's a random company, you know, Coca-Cola, uh, if they decide that, you know, hey, we want to be a part of the Apex and we're willing to put up $200,000 to be a part of the Apex, but I kind of want my my guy to be fishing the apex also we want our representative doing it you're not going to turn down two hundred thousand dollars in revenue that's going to go to the anglers you know mostly um you know it's it's going to make that pot a little bit bigger maybe it makes it a you know a a a free entry fee all of a sudden all of a sudden we're all singing a different tune like come on down yeah come on joe blow come on out you know and uh uh, and, you know, and that's how it works, you know, and hopefully Joe Blow doesn't take all your money. Maybe he's just a quality angler and he comes but, out there and, you know. But but you hit the nail on the head. And, and that that's something that I think always happens. We and, I, and, and I'm guilty, too. We all get blinders sometimes and we only look at one one piece of the, the pie rather, right. right, or the picture. And we don't look at the whole picture. And, and I'm not any different. You know, we we also come to this at times. But the, the greater picture is exactly that. All of a sudden, Coca-Cola says, yeah, we want this and we're going to put whoever, my right. son or my yep, nephew exactly. or whatever, <laughs> and they're in. And then everyone's like, well, I'm not sure I like that. Oh, by the way, this year, your entry fees are paid for. Oh, okay. I like it. <laughs> okay. Right. It's those same yeah. people that are all of a sudden singing a different tune. So right. We have to be transparent and people have to really think about the big picture. We, we don't have all the information. Right. So, and if well, we don't, is, I mean, and it's, a, and it's a business and it, and businesses are not, you know, deals happen and yeah, it doesn't, you know, you're not going to see every deal that happens and you're not going to see, but in the end result, you're going to see what the deal benefited and who does the deal benefit. And as long as, in my opinion, as long as the deal benefits the anglers out there, the professionals that are actually out there doing this the most, then by all means, allow, you know, I, I'm all for it. So, yeah, it, it, it's know. been great. I mean, so far and, and the traction, you've seen it from the outsider looking in. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've had friends of mine that are outside the country that have actually started paying attention a little more to this going, we're seeing this pop up more and more. So I know for a fact that, you know, the, the platform is working 
it, well, and we're, and we're and we're in the this year in the first season, and you're two two events in, you know, yeah. with the th- with the third one on the way. So any kind of traction right now is is absolutely astounding. You know, there's no you can't say you can't doubt it. It's like wow, there's a how is this even rolling at all? You know, this this shouldn't be going as good as it's going. Right. Um, uh, to pivot a little bit, you know, talking about the events, there's a few things that are a little different with this event than there than there have been in a lot of events um you know mlf does theirs you know every fish counts you know throw it back blah 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 uh you know bass masters back to kind of still traditional with a little bit of a hybrid and you guys have this hybrid out there that a lot of people are kind of wondering about um and that's you have the overall weight uh for the you know qualifying for the last day but you also have the amount of fish you caught qualifying for the for the overall day for five so you have five and five top 10 going how does that work and what do you as an angler how do you feel about that process and and is it important to you or is it or is it something that um you're kind of i'm on the fence about we'll see how it goes um well it's fresh and it's new Mm -hmm. a lot of people are kind of it it, it, they're really slow to embrace change because no one likes change but of course this format here is being embraced because it's different and it changes how we think as anglers. First, 30 days off limits, no practice, yes. none. You, right. and, and a lot of people don't even, haven't even been to the lakes, right? So we get to the lake and now we, you're fishing, but you're basically pre-fishing. You're trying to put pieces of the puzzle together as quickly as you can. And you, if you catch one big one and, you know, you, you, you kind of hear like a, a ding, like all these updates going on, <laughs> like, right. what's going on. Um, you, you're, you're kind of trying to figure out like what's going on. Or if you're not catching fish and you hear a bunch of dings, now you're thinking, man, I better stop throwing these bigger baits. Maybe I better change up what I'm doing. Cause I'm not getting bit. I need to catch more fish. So right. there, there is a level of, thought process involved or strategy, I should say, you know, as to how you approach it. So the thought was, we don't want to just reward someone for top weight all the time, because as we all know, we can, we can all stumble upon a rock pile and catch, you know, 25 to 30 pounds, right? right? We, we, we've done it. We've gotten lucky and are like, wow. Right. But you only caught five. Yep. And then there are those other times where, you know, you go somewhere and you're just whacking the fish, but you're not getting any bigger ones. And, and, and I think what happens is this is this hybrid format is designed to reward both. But at the end of the day, at the end of two days, you're whoever makes it the amount, the heaviest five weight, the heaviest, the, the most, or the five top five in quantity fish go to the, go to day two or day, day three. And then you're zeroed out. So basically those two days were set for you to pre-fish. Now you got to figure out, okay, that I got to, I'm bringing in my best five now. And that's where the traditional tournament comes in. So it really, I, I think it just gives, gives a different spin on it. And also you get to follow along on tourney X, uh, which is getting better and better. And, and that's another paradigm right. shift for the viewers. But um, this really changes how you fish. I'm not going to well, lie. Yeah. And the, and the tourney X is one, you know, is pretty much one of my next questions. The tourney X is, is it's going to allow people to, uh, it's going to bring the average angler, the guy who's watching the the spectator is going to bring them into the boat with you a little bit. Um, You know, it's not, it's not a video or anything like that, but it's watching that leaderboard change and change and change. And you're doing it while you're sitting at work and you got your phone propped up and you know you're watching yeah. this thing go and you can root for your buddy you can root for you know the guy that you're out there with and it kind of brings you into there and allows you to do it in a really interesting way but for you it's a leaderboard style and it, and it gives you that like you said man i'm catching three fish they're good fish but i only got three um, maybe I should switch up the game and start catching a few hey, other, you know, I'll, I'll give you two instances. I'll give you two examples. Day one, we started at Almanor and I'm hearing the phone. I'm, I'm just like, Oh my God. So I stopped fishing. I go to it. I'm like, what is going on? 
Travis Huckabee is absolutely wrecking him. And I'm going, what, what is this kid doing? You know, like, like I can't even buy a bite out here. Right. And so from what I was doing, it actually changed how, what I was fishing. It, it made me right. speed up. I was like, I got to hurry up and start catching up. And so I, I caught myself speeding up. It took me out of my rhythm. Hunter Shalander, the same thing we were talking. He goes, I'm not looking at that stupid thing anymore for the first two hours, three hours, because it's the anxiety is building in me and I'm speeding up and I can't do what I want to do. And then there are some anglers that are going, oh no, I need to know where, what I'm doing. I need to, you know, everyone's picking their own strategy. You right. know, it, it, it changes things along quite a bit. Um, it, so as far as, you know, the tourney X and the way it's going, uh, and then you've got the new format. Do you, I mean, is it just something you think is going to, you you know, is this going to be around for a while with them? Or is this, I mean, cause everything seems to be changing a little bit. Every time we, you know, something you hear about apex, it's like, Oh, well, they were going to do this. And now they changed that. And they, you know, this open format um, that you, that they talk about, what is, what's this open format? Why is, you know, all of a sudden it's Almanor and you're going to do breaks and then you're not going to do breaks. And then you're going to do, what is this allowing you guys to do as far as you start at one lake? Are you going to end at the same lake every time? Well, are you not going to end at the same lake every time? Are you, I've heard so many different rumors out there. And, and again, I don't want to speak because I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not in the know when it right. comes to how and what's going to be done. What we do know, what I do know is it's a hybrid format and right. they have told us they can do anything they want anything they want. They've talked about some breaks. They've talked about double weigh-ins. They've talked about sectioning off a portion of the lake to where only the top 10 will fish that lake that has not been touched. I mean, there that's, that is the interesting part of apex. We're watching this mature and we're watching it evolve and you never learn from anything you do right. So what's happening is, is they're, they're creating this, hybrid format which they know is successful just from the reaction from all the anglers and and they're just going to morph it to when they finally get that right one and then they know okay we're, we are growing together but to me my job isn't to worry about what the format is my job is to fish right that that's what my job is to do my job is to go out there and fish my butt off you know at that right. time you know, represent my partners, obviously, put on a smile. Let's, let's, you know, do our job, you know, our, you know, our obligations to communities or, or, or spectators, but, but the job itself in fishing is to just fish, put me on the water. I'll figure it out. Right. right. So if we do it two days on, on one lake, and then all of a sudden they threw us for a loop and said, oh yeah, top 10, you're going to this lake. Uh, well, it's still even. Yep. <laughs> right. Yep. What, what's the no, problem? You're still even what's what's the problem so no one has an no one has an edge they don't want it's this fishing shouldn't be about having an edge fishing should be right. about adapting and and doing the best you can and the best angler wins right i mean that's how that's how bass angler or that's how bass master started right classic was never even known until you were thirty thousand feet of in the air that's so. right i mean the, you know when they when they, when they went to lake mead it was just like yeah where are we going right a um, bunch, of, bunch of Alabama guys and Southern boys heading to Las Vegas to go sit on Lake Mead in a lake they've probably never seen before. And right. here's the first Bassmaster Classic. Good luck, and, guys. And, <laughs> and, and, and you know what? To touch base on this, Ed, let's, let's think about this. How many people, I'm guilty, yeah. when we see the schedule and it goes, oh, Clear Lake in September, we're like, yes, I know how to catch those fish in September there, right? <laughs> yep. Right. And then, oh, and then absolutely. You have the, the young angler who is just coming up from the non-boater side and he's, he's terrified. All he wants to do is weigh a limit. Right. So who, who's the edge coming to the guys that have the experience, the guys that have the time on the water. Some right. of the, some guys are retired and that's all they do. Right. Right. Some, some people are guides. Right. So apex is going They're They're taking this, this erasing this eraser goes we're going to take that off the off the board right that no, absolutely is, that's fresh and new yeah 
right? No, it's, I mean, it's a, yeah, and it's absolutely, like you said, it's, it's fresh and new, but it's also one of the things that I've always been a, a big proponent of, and that is that I love watching these new smaller lakes, you know, with a field of 30 right now, you know, possibly 40 in the future, who knows where it's going to go as far as what the number is going to be and where they're going to cap it. Um, you know, I know that you don't know that. I don't think Jeremy knows it yet. You know, I think that, no, no, I think that I, it's going to be, a, I think it's something like you said, they're going to figure out that as they go along as to where they cap it. But going to these smaller lakes, these smaller communities, um, I've had conversations with people in the, in the past. I've had conversations with you about this and going to those smaller communities makes a heck of a difference to those smaller communities. It, it, it really you know? does. Um, I don't want to say that uh, Apex is going to limit themselves to just smaller communities. No. Um, I mean, I really believe that it's about uh, going to destination areas as well, which can be a small community. Um, but, but I think the, again, we're talking about economic drive, what we bring it's it's good for those communities and i can tell you already um i was just i fished that wednesday nighter and i had like i don't know 10 or 12 guys come up to me and literally go dude how that that lake looked incredible i gotta get there is it is it really that good you know i mean are those smallmouth that big and then you had one guy that actually went there a few years ago and goes oh man the secret's out now basically <laughs> because because it is a great fishery and right. mark my words, time and date with you right here, I guarantee you more events are going to be at Lake Almanor next year. Guaranteed. Oh, yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. Now, <laughs> so so who can we thank for that? We could thank Bridgeford, Mercury, Bastat, Torch, right. right? Gary Yamamoto, the Anglers, Jeremy, you. We can thank our industry for doing that. Yep. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Um, and it's going to, and, and it will happen. And like you say, especially right now, you know, after the whole, you know, COVID thing and some of these places are really being hurt by lower economies and we drive up there and, you know, 30 boats doesn't seem like a lot and it's, it is, and it's not that much. I mean, it's going to infuse a little bit of money into their community, but what they get is exactly what you just said. They're getting that. Oh, now, you know what? We used to have 25 people show up on this day. Now we're getting 50. Now we're getting 60. Now we're getting a bunch of people noticing our area, our lake, our putting some emphasis on our town. Um, I know that the last one, when I talked to Greg Gutierrez about that up at um, the Columbia River and that the small town up there, and he said they were so happy to see us and it's going to drive people to that area because of what they offer for their area. I'm going to tell you what it's it, you, you, again, and I get chills with this because it really shows that, that, that apex is doing the right thing. And Jeremy is really doing the right thing. And, you know, and all those, all those that are involved in that, cause I, he has a group of people that he, he, he talks with and, you know, they, they work on this stuff. Um, it's about ancillary business, right? It's, right. it's, it's that residual um, business that comes we went to Plumas Pines. I guarantee you, I'll go visit them the next time I go. I've already right. told my wife, we got to go camping there. It's beautiful. Right. So they have already got one family. I know where I'm going to eat. I know that I'm going to stay at Quail Lodge. Fantastic Lodge. <laughs> yeah. You know, Johnny's wife were incredible. And that's what it, what all, all we did was we had a chance to experience it and we're telling everyone else. And once they go, it just becomes, it just grows and people right. just don't, they don't, they don't see that, that picture, you know? So it, oh, it's, no. it was definitely successful. Yeah. And you have that, you know, and, and this being a, I know this year it's basically going to be California. It's mostly here just because of, you know, for everything COVID wise and everything else, it's just going to be easier to do it here. But as you open that door and you start heading to Idaho, you start heading to, Oregon, you start heading to maybe Washington or Arizona or, you know, pick a state that's on the West Coast that just doesn't get a lot of tournaments or doesn't get a lot of exposure, you know, taking a taking an event like this and highlighting that on the West Coast, not the East Coast, not down South, but on the West Coast, 
I just don't see a negative anywhere in there. No, it, it's not. And, and Jeremy has already expressed his vision with the entire group uh, that this is just the tip of the iceberg. And he doesn't let anyone know his full plan because it's just right. not for anyone to know until it's the right time. And then when he releases it, you know, we're going to embrace it. We're going to support him. But he has told us that, you know, this could very well go into different states. And I mean, for me, right. and this is just me again, how awesome would it be, like you said, if we had a tournament in, it, it didn't even matter, like Idaho, and then you had one in New Mexico or, or Utah or Colorado, right? And then yeah. you had one in Washington, and then you had one in California, and one in Arizona, whatever, so that we have five. And then all of a sudden, the, ter- the TOC is at Lake Fork. Yeah. Right? Or, or Sam Rayburn, <laughs> or yeah. Amistad, or Falcon or right. you know whatever yeah. i mean that becomes a true tour but more importantly i mean i mean this, these are great lakes right it doesn't oh, have yeah. to be the small the small lakes but it definitely i know jeremy is gravitating towards some of these different uh venues and and that and that's what it is you know right no it's definitely it's definitely um there you know and talking with that another one of the uh, one of the subjects that comes up a lot is the money uh right now I don't remember what, you know, I don't, I don't remember what, the, what the winner got for this, for the Almanor event. Um, financially, I don't know. I don't remember what the payout was for overall champion. You know, here's a $10,000 check here's a $2,000 check, whatever it was. Um, I'm sure you do. <laughs> so we'll I, 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 on, Honestly, I, I wasn't looking at the check. I saw that. That trophy. Big, I saw that big <laughs> ass trophy. And I'm not going to lie. I mean, I'm jealous. I want it. Like, I. Oh, that's. <laughs> I mean, people. I, you... Fishing, what the fishing, what we do, fishing the way we fish. I don't care if you're. I have said this since I started this business, uh, since I started in this business. <laughs> the plaque on the wall always seems to mean more than the check that went in the bank account because that check Man. goes away, but that plaque is there for life. And I see you know, a little spot over your right shoulder there where a shelf could be. <laughs> you got a spot there, for that. A few, there's a few over <laughs> here. There, there, I only keep a few. You know, there's some from BASS. There's, a, yeah. you know, my cup win or whatever. But honestly, there are some that, that mean a lot. And, and that one would mean a lot because I know right. that this is the beginning of something much larger than us right and that, but, that's kind of our motto and, I mean, <laughs> yeah I, and i'm being i'm being really sincere this oh, is no. much bigger than us oh it absolutely it really is. is it absolutely is both the interviews i've done before i've talked exactly about that that this isn't this isn't built for the vince Hurtados. it isn't built for the greg Gutierrez. this is built for the 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 um you know the the austin wilson's it's being built for the the lucas john right i mean it's it's that's who this is being built for and i hope that they i hope that they see that i hope that the high school kids that are coming out right now that are having the opportunities that i wish i had in high school you know to fish this way i wish i'd have known about this i wish i'd have had the college you know been able to get a i don't know a college degree a college uh, education uh man and bass fished to do it you know okay you bring bring something you bring you bring a great point up ed and you know, I don't know if you noticed this, but at the weigh-in, everyone gets the mic. Right. Everyone gets the mic. And, you know, I, I just recently got to know Luke Johns over the past probably year. What, and I say kid because I could say that. What a great kid. He's articulate. He speaks well. He's smart. He's a hell of an angler. And no one would know that. Right. He, they would just think he was the silent, you know, winner over at New Maloney's. Well, no, he's not. He's, he's a great angler. He's young. He speaks well. And there's a reason why, you know, he's, he's gathered up some, some nice partners on his, on his Jersey. And I don't know if you noticed that. I mean, he's, yeah. he's doing a great job. So hats off to, to, to Luke Johns, you know, he's, I, oh, it's public now. I guess I got a man crush on the kid or something, you know, it's, it's just great. He, he's just, a, he's a great ambassador to do our sport. Yeah, I mean, there was, and there's a couple guys, you know, that I saw come up there. One that I never knew about, I saw him come up there, and he stands out. He's got the dreads. I, you know, I don't know his name. I don't know I his don't, name. I didn't really catch it all the way on there. But, you know, here, here's a guy that's coming out of nowhere, and people are going, and who is that? 
Well, well he's let me, sacking up fish like there's nobody's let, let business me tell, out let there. Let me tell you. Let me tell you who PJ the predator is. Right, I call him yeah. the predator. You know, because he's got the dreads and everything. Um, the guy can he can catch them, and yeah. he is. If you if you get a chance to just talk to the guy, he's just a great dude. He's just he just loves to fish, and you know what? He can catch them. Yeah. You know, like you said, people had questions. Did you see what the, the sacks he put together? I mean. It was not easy. It was not an easy bite. You know, right. I mean, some guys put it together. They see they see a limit and go, oh, yeah, these guys caught him. No, it was a tough bite. Right. You know? Yeah. Well, and that's, you know, and that's <laughs> to go all the way back. But that's where that whole tourney X thing comes in. That's where the, you know, catching more than just that is, you know, that guy was out there and, and you're watching it and you're going, yeah, God, you know, Austin caught five fish or caught six fish and he wins the event. But another guy's out there going, just I got 25 fish. <laughs> they don't, they're not gonna weigh as much. Hey, but I got look at that. I know is that guy tearing it up. And this, you know, and the winner Tra can't can barely get five fish in the boat. I'm telling you, Travis Huckabee told me we yeah. were sitting there and we were taking some photos, and and uh he's like, I was like, Man, great showing. He's like, Man, I had such a good time, man. I think I caught like 18 to 20 some fish. And I mean, I was ready to swallow a bullet right there. <laughs> I was like, how many? You know. It was, it was, it's good. You know, I mean, this is, and, and I, that, you know what, let me touch base real quick. The camaraderie amongst us for the most part, right. we all want to help each other. I mean, we're having right. a good time. We right. are, when, when people, when the new qualifiers come, they will understand how good of a time we're having. We were, you, I can remember in the nineties where we would show up to these derbies and we would be barbecuing and laughing and having a good time. And then it went away because egos got involved and, right. and, and, and what not, whatever happened. Right. Guess what? We're barbecuing. We're having a good time. Right. And we're meeting people. It's and great. And you hope that that stays that way. You know, you hope, you hope that this, this whole thing, no matter which way it goes, um, it stays that way. Um, but a little bit, you know, and, and we got off a little bit on that, but the, the one thing about, you know, and this is going to be a part of what you just said is the money. Um, if we want this to be a professional tour out here, there has to be that side of it. Also, there has to be the professional money in there because people can't do this. The Luke Johns can't make a living doing this unless he's seeing money. Now, I know that Kevin Van Dam isn't living off of his winnings. Now he probably could, but he's not, he's living off of other money and that other money. Is it there? Is it something that, you know, you're seeing, is it something that is going to be there? And does it open the door for, I guess, everybody, you know, is yes. it something that, Hey, if you strive, you fish the West, you know, it, just like I gave you the example before, if I go out and I fish the front of the boat and I go out on the, on the pro-ams and I do well, and I make that top 10 and they send me that letter and I'm excited and I'm stoked. Is there an opportunity for me to go out there and go, Hey guys, I just made this. I, I need somebody to help me out. I'm, I will tell you firsthand and I, I will not give you the names. Okay. Mm -hmm. There are anglers right now that have solidified very good contracts with companies, cash contracts. And that's for, that's, that's for them to say, but right. when you see, uh, partners like BCI construction, Ryan white, BCI construction is one of the largest construction companies in the Silicon Valley or in, in the Bay area. Okay. They're in the ballpark now. Okay. When you see, right. uh, people with new, uh, sponsors, there's, you know, a uh, beverage distributing wrap out there, you know, um, when you see you know, what it, uh, medicinal, medicinal usages type of wraps. These people are, they're coming into the, the segment. Right. And our anglers did it on their own. Jeremy provided them a platform. He provided them the information, some key numbers, a, a slight presentation of what Apex was, what it's going to do and how it can benefit the partners. And then they could submit a resume. They could present it to their partner. And let me tell you is what the type of man Jeremy is. He'll go to bat. And he's already told us, if you have someone that you need me to go talk to, I will try and get you that deal. Yeah. If you have a potential partner and you, you're not sure of how to present it, I will try and do my best to help you get something. 
And he's been a man of his word. I know for a fact he's done that for a few people. Okay. For a few people. Right. And that, that to me tells, tells me that there, yes, people go, well, is there, is there really money there? Yeah, there is a lot. It's just how, what you do with it, how, how you gain it. You know, mm-hmm. do you want, do you want to focus on four checks, you know, for the year or do you want four checks a month? I definitely want the four a month. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, it's just a way of thinking, you know, yeah. you still, you still have to fish, but, but, but us as anglers, we have a, we have an opportunity and an obligation to our partners yeah. to really represent them and promote them well. And, it, and Apex is now giving us an additional foundation to do that in a national scope without yeah. having to travel back East. Yeah. And that's, you know, and I'll, and I'll touch on that just a, in a couple of seconds too, but one of the things that, um, I don't know, maybe, I don't, I don't want to say it scares me, but it, it does. It, it's a, it, it's a question that I think is valid in, we talk about this thing and to get bigger and we want it to get bigger and we want it to grow, but as it does, and there's money out here, there are guys, um, Skeet Reese, Ish Monroe, Aaron Martins, Justin Lucas, uh, you know, there's a Cody Meyer guy here. There's a bunch of these big name guys who already have that platform. They already know how to get those sponsors. They already know how to work those deals. If they decide that, you know what, I don't want to fish the East coast anymore. I'm going to come home. I'm going to sit right here in my home and I'm going to, I'm going to build this, you know, I'm going to be a part of it. What stops them from coming in or not, I guess not stops them, but what, what is their, I guess the best way to phrase it is if you build it, will they come? And if they do, are they going to take all the spots for that? There's going to be nothing left for anybody else. You know what? Um, a lot of us have already fished against all those guys growing up. Right. And um, I think what everyone has to remember that the hybrid format format is, is kind of, it's, it's a neutralizer. Does that make sense? Like it does. T- t- till today, Ski Reese, outside of being probably one of the best businessmen out there, um, can still go to Clear Lake without any practice and probably beat 90% of the field without being there for a year or two. Agreed? Yeah. Oh, sure. In, in, the, in, the, in the normal scheme of things. You know, um, and we've seen acts like that where Ish Monroe, you know, shows up at the Delta and, and, and has one. And, and, you know, he's just a great angler as well and a great ambassador but what happens when they get into this hybrid format Mm -hmm. what happens when their weight gets zero what happens when they have to follow the score tracker which they're really familiar with right what happens when they go to a lake that they don't know anything about right you know it 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 just evens the field out so for me i i want to fish against those guys again i want to fish against all the great anglers you know because when you when you win you get to say man I beat them all. I would, I can't, well, I hope to see guys like Todd Woods. I hope to see guys like from the Arizona area, you know, right. like, you, you know, Bailey, I would, I would love to see, they have a lot of great anglers down South as well, you know? Right. Um, yeah. Just in this state alone, there's a lot of Southern anglers that have to, and they already know kind of what's going on. They have to travel around to get anywhere where they can make a name for themselves because they can't do it on their Southern waters that much, you know? Yeah. And, and, and these are, they're good people too. You know, is they're not right. just great anglers, they're, they're good individuals. Right. And so I hope, I think in the future, they're going to see that this is really a great platform for them to really do something mm-hmm. with it, you know, and it's not just great for them, but it's great for their partners. And that's something right. to, that you have to really think about, you know, um, my partners get to benefit from this. Right. You know, you know, even if it's, you know, it could be the smallest partner on your shirt or, you know, it could be the the teeniest person, but you get, they get that foundation. They get, they get the platform too. And that's great. Um, yeah, you know, that, that, uh, I, I, yeah, that kind of leads back into one I asked before is how big, you know, they think this will go as many, as much as the, you know, how many anglers are going to make it. Um, but one of the things, I guess what I want to see also is that just because you're up there, just because you're in the top, let's say that, let's say they go to 50. This is a total hypothetical. I have zero, any insight on any of this, but let's say they do the top 50. They're going to make this a 50 boat field, you know, 
forever and or 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 for the time being you know for the immediate future they're going to do 50 boats um do you think and i'd like to see is that 40 of those stay or 30 of those stay in the top at the bottom 20 have to go back and requalify you know, is, um, I, do you think that that's a scenario that you could possibly see and allow guys to come up and say, yeah, you know what? Um, let's say a Cody Meyer or, or an Ishman Road do come back here and they do want to fish that. And it's like, didn't work out for them. They're like, yeah, couldn't figure it out. Now they're in the bottom 20. They got to come back and requalify for this. But it allows for, you know, like you say, a PJ to step up and say, oh, no, I made it. I'm here. You know, I'm, I, yeah. I, I qualify, I came out, I fished the wild, you know, I fished the wild West pro Ams. I made it up here and now I'm sitting that top 10. Um, you know, there's, t- there's a lot of young guys out there. There's a lot, uh, you know, I'm not a young guy anymore, but I'm one of those guys that would love to be able to just have that experience for in my life. You know, the Bassmaster is probably out of my scheme at this point, you know, MLF probably not in my, in the cards financially or anything else otherwise. But this becoming of the West Coast, all of a sudden, there's a little bit of a spark and a dream there it, for a lot of people. All of a it's, sudden, it's it's attainable. It, you yeah. could touch it. You right. you could feel it. Like it's that close. I will tell you this: I've had more than ten, but less than fifteen calls from individuals that are saying, "I'm coming out of retirement. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> I want to do this," I, I, and and I'm serious because it's new and it's fresh and it's something that. We always talked about having something like this and now it's here. Yeah. I, I yeah, I, I, I wish it hadn't taken so long to get here, but it's here. You know. Well, it takes um, a lot of hard work. It takes a right. lot of money, you know? Um, and I, I'm only saying this because, you know, I know how we all know the, the apex anglers know how much Jeremy has just poured into this right. and he's still paying back over a hundred percent all the way down his events all the right. way down it is right. it, sure it'll say 80 percent or 90 percent on some of these events but with contingencies and everything else it's all over 100 percent. the guy just delivers right, right. And, and if they do actually or i don't even know i don't even say if they do actually i believe they will eventually become entry fee free events um and become a professional sport i i still to this day have said until the last guy who fishes in that event, when if it's the top 50, when number 50 gets a check and he paid nothing into it, it's a professional sport all of a sudden. Well, because that's, that's where it has to come down to it. In my, in my opinion, that's what it takes to become there because the last guy who fit in, you know, the guy who, who hit 75 over par at Augusta, yeah, he gets a check. So well, BASS hasn't figured it out yet. Nope. MLF hasn't figured it out yet. Nope. Um, so I'm not gonna say that Jeremy will. I right. think we can be hopeful and try and get the best um that we possibly can for our anglers, and we should be very excited about that because at the end of the yeah. day, someone has to pay those salaries, right? Correct. Someone yep. has to pay those salaries and and at the same time, because that's what it is, it's a salary. And at the same time, the business, Apex, Wild West, you know, the media company itself, they they have to make money. So oh, of course, Absolutely. somewhere down the line, someone's got to pay for it. Well, you've so, got to come up, you've got to come up with those non-endemic sponsors. You've got to come up, you guys need to start driving Jaguars to tow your boats with. You need to start getting out there and <laughs> <laughs> you know this is where this is where it's going to come down to i mean honestly that's what it comes down to is that there has to be um you know uh, there has to be the big lion out there that uh it comes in and says this this fishing thing is going somewhere and um you know i'm willing to put up the five hundred thousand dollars the wall you know i look at <laughs> that mlf thing they've got some big big players up there and they're giving away checks you know, I think it was uh, Ish that I was talking to and he was talking about, you know, here's a bunch of billionaires playing around going, oh, what's that? You know, $100,000 for them is, you know, it's a lot of money for people, but I mean, it's not much for them, you know, and they're giving out $100,000. Hopefully one of these days, our West Coast stuff can become something like that. Well, we can, like I said, we, we can only hope. I know that, um, you know, there's a few of us that talk about it 
um, that have been around a while. I call the older guys, you know, like Zach Thompson, myself, mm-hmm. guitar is, uh, you know, Ken Moss up there. Um, we, we talk about the, this, uh, euphoric opportunity. Right. We see it. And remember, I just said like, it, it's tangible. We can touch it. Right. That's, that's where we are right now. And I don't want to speak for them. But just by the way we talk about it, even, you know, guys like Mark was saying, he's, you know, he's up there in age too. I mean, we all feel it. <laughs> well, I, I, I'll call him out. Yeah. I, mean, I am too. Oh, no, Mark's up there. He's, he's, a, he's definitely older. <laughs> but, but the, rea- and he just won an event, you know, and smoked yeah. everyone at the, at the Delta. I mean, he, in a team event, but he's a, a, another great. I, how about that? You know, you're seeing apex anglers at yep. the top of a lot of these events. Yes. There was the top three at that pro am were, were apex anglers. Yeah, Phil Dutra is a, a a great angler, good good angler, good 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 uh person. You know, every ever like I said, everyone is just a great bunch of guys. But this is tangible for a lot of us. We feel it, right? And we're we're back in it, and uh, we're we're very very excited and proud, and we're going to help Jeremy however we can. Right. And like I said, I I think that. I think that the guys who in the end results, I'm hoping this benefits is those guys coming out of college right now, because that's who I want to talk for. I want to say for those guys that are coming up out of the college ranks right now going, I don't have, you know, Hey, there's a fishing team here. And they're, they're, they have those, they have that ability to fish. There's a career for you in the industry that you truly love. Um, but you need to, support it now and it needs to grow and you need to get on the back of guys like this right here who are out there building it for you and understand that there's a lot of people who want to see this happen um and they want to they want to see it happen for them you know they want to see it so that you can turn around and look at it and say you know what this is something we built um and we're very proud that we built this and we're very proud that a lot of people have benefited from it and that's what i hope we can see in the future well, you know, with this I, I think, with I, think we are, I, th- I think we are, and we're seeing mo- more importantly, not only are the anglers growing, but we're seeing the partners market grow. Right. Okay. And which is, it, it's critical because that's why you have partners because you want their market share to grow as well. Right. And, you know, you know, Garmin is a sponsor of mine and we're seeing more and more Garmin out there because more focus has been brought to how, incredible these units are right mm-hmm. that's a platform Absolutely. that jeremy has provided i mean the stuff is amazing absolutely right. amazing i i am so blessed to be able to just utilize that the tools that they have okay you look at what bass cats doing rick pierce um and and having anglers or having um the quest available for apex right. there's 32 anglers well, there's only a few of us with bass cats. You know, th- right. this is this is unheard of, right? But yeah. he's supporting this. Uh, right. Mercury is support. We have our own service trailer. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's very important out there. I mean, they have pulled out all the stops. They pulled out all the stops, and you know what? Our partners are growing. I'm very happy. Um, I, I, you know, I, I just we're all ecstatic. We're kind of giddy about it because it's working. It's working. You know, and I know a lot of people think, Oh, it's too good to be true. Or it's the next, Oh, this is kind of like the next latest and greatest. You know what? When you see the vision, they just haven't seen it. They weren't presented with it. Yeah. And and it was, it was something important. You know, when Jeremy had us all offsite at a meeting, he invited us. It was all like covert, you know, everything, you know what, you got a professional, you got a letter, in the mail i was like what's this you got like a, a little folder saying hey we we're going to present something to you you've been selected at this time at this place meet here everyone showed up and he sat there played a video and then got up there and he spoke and people were signing on the dotted line they were in it well i mean that's uh I guess we can't ask for a whole lot more right this second on what, uh, what apex can do and what it, what it is out there. I'm, um, you know, I saw this for the beginning looking as an outsider and I said, you know what, this needs to be out here. We need to be talking about this. We need to be, I need to be interviewing these guys and talking to them about 
some of this. I reached out to Zach Thompson right off the bat. He jumped right on board and said, absolutely, dude, you need to be doing this, man. You, you know, and I'm, I'm super happy to be able to talk to you guys and talk to the, everybody. And, and hopefully everyone will come across this screen. <laughs> you know, oh. I want to see everybody. I want to talk to every one of you guys and get every, all the aspects. And in the future, you know, it's going to be, we're going to be talking about how you did it, how you won. We're not just going to be promoting, um, you know, the apex itself. I want to be talking to, you know, when we talked to Austin Wilson about how he did it and it was awesome. Uh, you know, how, how hard it was to do these events and how hard it was to go out there in the snow and rain and wind. And that's what I want to talk to these guys about and, you know, and hopefully go out and, and see how, how these, how these tournaments turn out. And hopefully one of these days, you know, the building of it won't be as important as the, Hey, how'd you catch them out there today? What'd you catch them on? Who was your sponsors? And, and that's where we need to be. And I think that's where we're going to go. And, and um, you know, here, here's, here's where we're at right now. So, well, you know, it was filmed and I'm, I'm, I, you know, we can only hope because, you know, there's the film crews can only be so big, and, you know, they're expensive. <laughs> yeah. So Jeremy, Jeremy's yeah. got them all running around, but um, we can only hope that it caught the emotion because um, I, I did uh, watch Austin's YouTube uh, video that he just put up of the all three days. Right. And you can hear it in his voice on day two when he was losing fish. You can hear him talking because he's talking to himself and he's going, right. you, can't, <laughs> you can't lose these fish. You have to fish clean. God, I need to, I got just, and you can feel it, right? And then he right. stops and, and, I'm, and I'm breaking my voice up because that's what he was doing. And then you see him make one little change. Mm -hmm. Why are these fish short striking? He stops. He opens the tackle box. He puts on a treble hook to this little swim bait. And he's telling the story about, man, I hate fishing like this. I don't want to kill these fish. They're going to gut it. They're going to bleed. I risk that, but I cannot afford to miss this championship. Mm -hmm. and, and I was, I mean, I was really like engulfed in that. And that was hard. Just, that was just his, his video that he was, that he was, <laughs> right. that he was, um, that he was videotaping. And then I thought to myself, <clears throat> man, you can feel what was going on. Right. And, and I believe that uh, the show is probably going to do the same thing, but uh, I caught myself becoming a fan, you know, of like, wow, right. you, you're, you're in there. You're, you, you're just like, Oh, you know, you're hurt and like, Oh, but too bad. I already know the outcome. Yeah. You know, but well, if I, I didn't know, if I didn't know the outcome, <laughs> it would have been a different story. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's part of today's, um, today's era. I mean, we have, you know, Austin putting up his, his videos and doing the things that he's doing, showing you the tournament, showing you talking about this whole thing through him talk, you know, through the event. Um, there are so many new ways for everybody to get in touch out there and to, <clears throat> you know, I guess build their own, build their own themselves up. And the older generation doesn't do it as well as the newer generation does. Obviously, just technology is technology, and you have to you have to really be a part of it. Um, I know because I do my own channel, I struggle with that too. Where you've got it, you you know you've got to be out there and put out content that people love, and that's another avenue. You know, talking about this with Apex that is so interesting because. I believe that if it was, you know, back in the day, and if it was the FLW, he would have never been allowed to do that kind of thing, you know? No, and no. Apex is wide open with allowing you guys to have your own everything. Well, and, and what it did <clears throat> is Apex bring, so you have Apex. Apex brings the angler. The angler has his social media, right? So right. it goes Apex angler, his social media. Okay, let's take Apex out. Now it's Austin and he has his social media and what he, he's trying to build that social media platform. He's trying to get his YouTube channel built, right? Yep. He goes and fishes FLW. He goes and pre-fishes, but, but no one knows Austin, right? right. I mean, some of us do, right? but now bring in Apex. They see him win and he says, Hey, I'm going to put this all up on video. You guys will be able to watch it. And now those millions, those 47, million viewers for on the pursuit channel the other i mean i can't the numbers are huge right. they're hearing austin say i'm gonna put this up on video <laughs> right right and now 
What did that do for Austin? It gave him an opportunity to present himself yep. and build his value. People don't see that. And I'm just, there's a few of us that do. Right. We're just like, we, it's here at our hands. Do something with it. Right. You know? And so, I mean, I'm using him as an example, but that's, that's just, I mean, look at yourself. Oh, no. oh, yeah. This is a great opportunity for any, anyone covering Apex. <laughs> oh yeah. No, this is Bassingler Magazine. Yeah. Bassingler Magazine. Uh, when I started doing this with Zach and I started doing this with, uh, you know, Greg, I put it on my own channel. It gets a certain amount of views. I talk, you know, all of a sudden Mark Lazane's on the phone and he's like, dude, I want you doing that for me. I want Bassingler Magazine. I want us to do this. You come with me and we're going to put this out here. Bassingler Magazine is a huge, you know, deal for me. It's a huge you know, it's, it's everywhere. It's all around the world. And now we've got this YouTube channel that we can talk about. And I'm going to hopefully, like I said, <laughs> I'm hoping to get every one of you guys up here and every one of the apex anglers eventually comes across this screen, talks with me about it and talks about, you know, where they're going as I, I think this year is going to be, cause it is a smaller event this year with only th three events or four events, four events with yeah, the championship. Four. I think with the championship, it's four. So yeah, so I mean, there's not as many people, but I'm going to try to get as many as I can to get on here and you there, know talk about what's going on and what it, how important this is out here. There's a great group. It's a great group of individuals. You know, um, John Pearl was a fantastic champion um, mm -hmm. when he won the TOC. Um, he he's great to talk to. I mean, I, everyone's great to talk to. I, I don't want to just single out him, but you know, you get to know these people and you get to understand their personalities. You know, like I said, I didn't really know Austin, but, you know, I knew him, but I didn't know him. And, and you right. kind of like listen to that thing and then you start identifying. And, and I think that's what happens is people will start to identify their 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 anglers and like they become fans of that guy. Like, oh, he's cool. Or, oh, man, he's yeah. the villain or, you know, I, <laughs> right. You know, oh, I like that guy, he, he, you know, for whatever reason. Well, um, that's a, and, and, and just a couple of the guys that we talked about here. I mean, PJ is, I'm, I'm going to get that guy on here. I'm going <laughs> to talk to him. He, you know, and, and it's because he, you know, he came across as somebody that everybody, and I know everybody did the same thing that I did. They went up and went, who's that guy? You know, cause he's not, he's not the ball cap wearing, you know, clean cut guy, you know, uh, Luke John's the same thing. It's like, Hey guys, I want I want to get those guys, John Pearl. I mean, guys talk about John, but no one hears from him. You know, yeah. he's not, he's not this out there guy. That's, you know, he's not the Greg Gutierrez who's out there talking a lot and doing a lot of things. Um, you know, there's, there's plenty of people out here that don't know some of the names that are in this apex right now. And I guess it's kind of my job is to go out there and get you guys out here and get you up here and let people see, who you are yeah and that's what yeah. i want to know i want i want people to start knowing who these people are they, i mean Not and 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 i think it's a good thing i mean when you when you get to know these people over the last i'd say two or three years you know i've got to know a uh, juan acosta and he he's just a great individual very soft-spoken he'll he, he won't lie you you can ask him hey man i'm having trouble he'll tell you how it i mean he don't hold back he's just he's just very trustworthy a good individual you know, and, and just like some of these, so, some of these other anglers, Jeff Michaels, um, right. really, really getting to know Jeff over the last uh, year and a half, two years. And, you know, he's another great individual. He's not just a fantastic angler, but he's a great individual. And, and he's, you know, you're seeing him be a, a true ambassador to the sport and, you know, promoting his, his, his partners extremely well. And, right. you know, it's just, it's just, it's fun to see. You're seeing the, the clay turn into this picture, yep. you know? Yeah. No, no, the statue is being built and it's going to be, you know, let's hope, let's hope that it keeps coming up. So, well, Vince, I, I think you've got all the questions that, you know, I really had going. Um, again, I, you know, Bass Angler and myself, we want to thank you for coming on here and doing this and talking about this, uh, this, this event, this apex. I hope in the future we get to talk to you when you win one, <laughs> you know, so yes. we can, you know, it's always great to talk to the winners and the champions afterwards. I will always be pursuing the guy who wins these events. And, um, you know, I got, I got Austin right off the bat and I'm going to, you know, whoever wins the one at what's the next one coming up Amador, right? I'm not going to say, because we don't know. They could change right now. Oh. We know it's Amador, but they could change okay. it at any given time. Um, 
you know, on a side note, we just don't know what the water levels. I mean, right, right. That's California a big player is, this year. <laughs> it has just been absolutely crazy the water level. So um, Jeremy has really been up front saying, Hey, look, we're going to, we will just be ready to adapt if we have to. Mm -hmm. And that's all we can expect is some communication and some flexibility. You know, he's always, always flexible with us. And so we need to be flexible with him. I, I try and keep these perspective. I try to stay neutral, give the benefit of the doubt, because you know what, yeah. this is some, this is some cool stuff going on right now, man. And, and I, I really believe that it's a lot bigger than, than we know. I, I really do. Right. Well, yeah. it is. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, I'm right there with you. I think it is too. So, um, but again, uh, Vince, thanks for doing this, man. Uh, oh. I appreciate it. We're going to sign off now, let everybody get back into to whatever they're doing. And, uh, but we really appreciate it. And, and uh, I hope to talk to you again soon and uh, um, good luck out there. Hey man, I appreciate it. Thanks for your time. The opportunity um hopefully i didn't sound overly excited but it's genuine <laughs> it's That's it's genuine good. it's it's very genuine and in it in t where we are today it's just it's refreshing to see some really good things happening for our industry the anglers uh for for wild west apex um and and all of our partners and i'm i'm blessed to be a part of it and i'm really thankful and uh man i i can't wait to see you out there Hopefully it's with me holding that trophy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. So thanks for signing in to Bass Angler. Uh, thanks for turning in. I'll be back out here with another interview with another great angler here soon. Uh, so uh, thanks for tuning in and keep liking, sharing, and subscribe. Really appreciate it.